The Big Bang Theory would be incompatible with a literalistic interpretation of Genesis chapter 1. When I read the Bible, I get old earth. I mean, I take the Bible as the error-free word of Show God. Show me where it says millions of years. I don't think it's fair to say that there's one side that holds scriptures true, and the other side's trying to force some interpretation into it. So in today's episode of Theological Theory, I'm going to be talking about something that could potentially be contentious and that is definitely out of my wheelhouse of expertise. But I'm going to try to explain my topic to the best of my ability because I do think it's interesting and I do think it is helpful. So today's topic is this. Is the Big Bang Theory of cosmology, or the Big Bang Theory that attempts to explain the universe's beginnings and the universe's inception, is that theory compatible with Christianity and with a biblical worldview? That's the question that I'm going to grapple with and try to answer to the best of my ability today. Now, like I said, this could be a potentially contentious episode just because there are people who have very specific and dogmatic beliefs about the origins of the universe and the age of the earth and the age of the universe, how the universe itself came about. A lot of people have very specific beliefs on this issue. My goal is not going to be to try to convince anyone of anything today. My goal is to just tell you some of the places that I was ignorant in this discussion. There was a lot that I didn't know, and in researching it, I learned a lot. I don't want to be condescending to anybody. I don't want to necessarily try to convince anyone of anything. I just want to discuss this topic and discuss some places where I definitely learned something while I was researching this. So let's start out by defining our terms. What is the Big Bang Theory? The Big Bang Theory, as far as I could tell, is the theory of the universe's beginnings. Specifically, it is theorized that the universe began from a tiny point. This was a point of massive energy. And at some point in the past, this tiny point of energy expanded rapidly to create the universe that we now sit in today. How this theory was born was that it was observed in science and astronomy that when we look at galaxies that are far away, we can see that they are receding from Earth. In, in other words, they're, they're moving away. And so it was first theorized by a man named Georges Lemaitre, a Roman Catholic priest, mathematician, and astronomer, that the galaxies might appear to be receding from Earth because the universe is in a state of expansion. This was in 1927, and in 1929, a man by the name of Edwin Hubble confirmed this fact of universe expansion by by noting that there was a redshift in the light that was coming from these galaxies, so he was able to calculate the rate of expansion of the universe. So this is how the Big Bang Theory was born, because if you think about it, if the universe is in a state of expansion, if you run that process in reverse, what do you have? You have a, a state of contraction. So you can trace this expansion back to a singular point of massive energy, which is where we get the term Big Bang, because we have an explosion of energy from this point in space and time. So it is theorized that space, time, energy, everything was created in this event where this energy and mass rapidly expanded. So that, in essence, is the Big Bang Theory. Now remember our question, we're trying to determine whether the Big Bang Theory is compatible with a Christian worldview or with a biblical worldview. It's at this point that I would like to say that having defined the Big Bang Theory the way I have, I would say I see no contradiction between a biblical worldview or a Christian worldview, and the Big Bang Theory. The first objection is that the Big Bang is thought to have happened millions or even billions of years in the past. Now, for a lot of Christians, that's a big problem because they hold a quote-unquote young earth view of the earth, believing that God's act of creation took place 10,000 or maybe even fewer years in the past. Now, I was surprised to learn in my research that this young earth view, at least in its modern conception, has its roots in the research and writings of a man named Archbishop James Usher. Now, what he did was he took the chronology and the genealogies of the Bible and worked back from known points in history that are recorded in the Bible and sequentially added up the genealogies and the chronologies that he could find in the Bible and determined that the beginning of the earth was somewhere around 4000 BC. Now, I have to commend Usher because this is a good idea. If you have complete genealogies and chronologies in the Bible and you have a definite starting point where you know the definite date and you can work back from that, that's a good idea. The problem, however, is that recent scholarship has shown that there are definite gaps in the genealogies that are recorded in the Bible. That's not a problem. It doesn't mean that the genealogies are wrong. It just means that the people recorded in these genealogies were the people that the biblical authors deemed most important in the genealogy. So when it says so-and-so begot so-and-so begot so-and-so, 
it's not necessarily the case that the one was the father of the next down the line. He could have been the grandfather or the great-grandfather. And so you have gaps in these genealogies that would make large generational gaps in some instances. The other problem is that the Bible is not necessarily specific or clear as to the time frames of a lot of these beginning events. There are a variety of interpretations of the first few chapters of Genesis and the creation narrative, whether it was literal or figurative, whether the days were literal 24-hour days or whether they were ages. The Bible does not clearly state how much time was elapsing uh, between some of these events and between some of these acts of creation. So though it was a good idea, the calculations of Archbishop Usher are probably really not that accurate. It was a good idea, but further scholarship shows that it's probably not an accurate way of calculating time. So this being said, and realizing that the main research for trying to determine how long ago creation actually happened, it stands on kind of shaky ground as far as the Archbishop's work is concerned. We really don't have a problem there because the Bible could indeed be compatible with an old earth view. Like I said, the Bible really is not clear on how much time elapses between these events. And like I said, the genealogies are not necessarily unbroken genealogies, and the chronology of the Bible is not such that we could calculate time based on those. And so setting aside Christian tradition or church tradition, which admittedly is a hard thing to do, but setting that aside, really we have no evidence in the Bible that the earth was indeed created 10,000 years ago or around 4,000 BC. That was just the calculations of a scholar of the past. So that's the answer to objection number one, is that a young earth view of creation really is not necessarily the only view that could square with the Bible. An old earth view could indeed square with the Bible just as well as a new earth. The second objection that a Christian could bring to the discussion of the Big Bang Theory and whether or not it can square with Christianity is the fact that the Big Bang Theory is often associated with the theory of evolution, which has its own problems in squaring with Christianity. I'm not an expert scientist or historian, so take my words with a grain of salt, but as I was researching, I really could not find that the original conception of the Big Bang Theory was necessarily tied to evolution in any great way. Now, an evolutionary worldview today would indeed incorporate the Big Bang Theory into its explanation of the universe because that's what science is saying right now. But as far as I could tell, evolution and the Big Bang Theory don't necessarily have to be tied together. The Big Bang Theory could stand on its own and there could be various explanations for how life began and progressed from there on. And so that would be my answer to the second objection, saying that evolution does not necessarily have to be a part of the Big Bang Theory. I think it is incorporated a lot of times today with it because evolution is seen as the scientific viewpoint of how life came about. And so they would lump the scientific view of how the universe came about with that. Now, I'm not going to speak on evolution today. I have my thoughts on that as well, but I'm not going to argue one way or another for that. I'm just saying that's a problem for Christians that evolution would be tied to the Big Bang Theory. And I'm saying I don't think it has to be. And in fact, in its beginning stages, I don't think the Big Bang Theory necessarily was tied to evolution. So I hope you found this as interesting as, as I found it when I was researching it. Again, I want to make clear that I'm not trying to change anyone's minds or convince anyone of anything necessarily. I just want you to think about these things because I there were some things that I was blown away by and that I really did not know until I researched it. And uh, so I thought I'd share it with you and uh, see what you thought. Now I will say, as Christians, no matter what you believe about the origins of the universe, it's really not as important as what we believe about salvation, about redemption, about the work of Jesus Christ, and about the gospel. Uh, that's really the story of the Bible, is, is the story of God interacting with people, of Jesus redeeming people. Uh, that's the story of the Bible. Though a discussion of the beginning of the universe is interesting, it's not necessarily the be-all and end-all of Christianity and, and theology. There's a fantastic talk by Dr. John Lennox, who is a mathematician and professor at Oxford University. This talk is entitled, Seven Days That Divide the World. And it talks about the seven days of creation and the difference between an old world and a new world view of creation. And Dr. Lennox does a very good job in that talk explaining why that discussion is not really the most important discussion that needs to happen within the Christian circle. And it's really not a place where we ought to be particularly dogmatic in our faith. It's something that's important, but not 
as ultimately important as the gospel. So I hope you enjoyed this discussion, this talk, and I hope uh, I was at least somewhat scientifically and historically accurate. Again, I'm not a professional in these areas, so take my opinions and, and research with a grain of salt. But um, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you did, you know, leave a like on the video, uh, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like it, and I hope to see you again soon. You can't have disagreement on the resurrection, mm -hmm. the virgin birth, mm -hmm. Israelites crossing the Red Sea is a miracle, mm -hmm. a fish swallowing Jonah for three days, mm -hmm. but yet we're saying it's okay to disagree on what Genesis plainly says. And, and the point that I want 